Okay, welcome back. So this week begins on Tuesday the 7th of May. Monday was a bank holiday. It was also a wet Monday. We had 20 mil of rain yesterday, so I had a day off. A quick introduction to the video. Tuesdays are crop walking day. The agronomists come round every fortnight on a Tuesday and check the crops for disease and weeds and just their general progress. The agronomists that come out are Emma and Anna from Crop Advisors and I can't remember how well I explained it at the time but we were using an end sensor on the leaf of the winter wheat to check the nitrogen levels and it's connected to the app on the phone, you'll see it in a minute, it's connected to the app on the phone, you type in on the app um, how many tonnes to the, what yield you want to achieve on the crop of wheat, so say it's 11 tonnes and then it measures the level of nitrogen in the plant and then tells you how much more, how many more kilos of nitrogen you need to add to the crop to achieve that yield. Should have brought the drone down here. Be no, no. fine. It's got it tall quick, hasn't it? I was like, oh, the crop really the crop's shot up tall. I did think about bringing my tra waterproof trousers, and I thought, no, that'd be right. Do you know, I don't mind my legs; they're dry. It's when my feet are really. Wet. I had wet feet all day yesterday, so you know. Do you want to explain what we're doing? No. <laughs> <laughs> so. So Anna's got the end sensor and it's connected to the phone, the app on the phone, and we're walking around the winter wheat, testing the nitrogen levels in the leaf of the wheat, is that right? Yeah, that's good. Okay, and this is Anna from Crop Advisors. From Crop Advisors. <laughs> and Dad and Emma have gone that way. They're gonna do the other end of the field. Every time Anna takes a test, it marks it on the on the app on the phone. I'm walking in the tram line just trying to keep my legs a bit dry. We're also looking for cleavers as well. We are looking out for weeds. We're on 16 out of 30. Will ever get, so will it give us a result when we get to the end then? Yeah. We have completed. Okay. See what it says. 85, so there's quite a lot considering it's had its last That's what dose. it's recommending. Yeah. But it had its last dose on Friday. Yeah, so, so it, it hasn't that. taken that up yet. So that's that's How yeah. much did you put on in the last? 80 kilos. There we go. So that's about right. And then you've got a bit of control. It wouldn't have taken up that last dose in two or three days, no, would it? No, no, no. We did have 20 mil at rain at the weekend, so... It's still had a good drink. I wonder where they are then. Did... Oh, they've gone over the road. So we're at farm one now. We're just testing the nitrogen levels on the winter wheat. On the this is dorsum, this variety. This this crop isn't quite as advanced as the X days what we looked at first, and it hasn't had its third dose of nitrogen yet. So we'll see what the nitrogen levels are on it are on it, and then see what it needs to have. We're on number 29. This is actually one of our worst fields of winter wheat. It's very patchy from the wet winter. And you can see on this uh, satellite image, all the orange bits are basically bare patches, so, and all the green bits are where there's actually still crop left. Oh. Let's see what the results are. Oh. Very little. So it only needs another 27 kilos. So what do you reckon it was the next? So it was 60? I think the next dose was um, recommended 60 kilos. Eric, you come here. Eric. I'll give you a recommendation for 
pea and bean weevil. Yeah. But at the moment, you haven't got any pea and bean weevil. Do you well, know have what got... pea and bean weevil looks like? Nope, but right. that one looks like it's already been eaten. We could just get to the plant, Eric. Mind out the way, dog. So, that is notching from pea and bean weevil. Yep. So, the, the beans are going to grow so fast now, aren't they, that yeah. the beetle damage might not even affect the beans that much. Yeah. I mean, I'll do the recommendation, but it doesn't mean you have to do it, actually. Yeah, we'll just keep an eye on the damage. Yeah. But you need the beans to be open and a bit, let's actually see what's going on, because I've got, I've got a feeling they're just like amateurs, there could be a bit of threat, a bit of pollen beetle, a bit of just sort of holding them back a bit but this sunshine and this moisture you won't recognize them in a week yeah they're going to grow so fast aren't they right we'll see you anna yeah in the discovery seems to have developed the last week yes yeah, so these beans are looking good we had another 20 mil of rain yesterday so they're going to grow like mad this week it's warm really warm definitely need to get that sorted we're going to look at the spring barley next. We'll have a look at that. You can actually see the water bubbling up out the ground there. Must be a water leak. Oh. I thought I was going to get you on video slipping over them. Okay. We're not even sponsored by crop advisors this week, are you? Because you've not got any. Yeah, we've got three cockerels. Three cockerels. Isn't that? Bruno, come on. Come on. Come through the hedge. Come on. Maybe he doesn't like the stinging nettles. <laughs> Come here, then. Come here. Oh, right, hang on, hang on. I love you too, but hey, yay! Thank you. No, Rob's not quite as agile as his dad. Yeah, Eric went through the hedge. Do you go to the gym next to the car park in Winchester? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, crop walking's done. Yeah, that was a big puddle there. I'm going home for some lunch because I'm starved and I need to get these boots off as well because my feet are sweating. Okay, it's Wednesday morning. It's, as you can see, it's very foggy, damp and foggy this morning. I've got lots of spraying and fertilising to do this week. So as it's foggy and damp, it's too damp to go spraying so I've filled up with liquid N we're gonna put some fertilizer on some wheat stick around though because in a bit I will show you the new drone what I bought and we'll we'll fly it and see if we can get some video of spraying when the Sun comes out it's a perfect morning for it it's everything's so damp the crop you'd be soaked if you walked through it this morning too wet for spraying or too damp for spraying anyway give it a couple of hours and I think it's gonna be bright hot sunshine again like yesterday but at the moment, it's perfect conditions for liquid fertilising. The crop's really wet, so it, the fertiliser will almost just run straight off the leaf. It's all working a lot better now, clean the filters out. I think, the, well, what I found in the filters, the intake filter was absolutely block solid with bugs and flies and all sorts of horrible things, so whether there must have been a load of them in the fertiliser and, uh, yeah, sucked them straight into the sprayer. The pump's a lot quieter as well now that the filters are clean. I was wondering why the pump was getting so noisy. I kept checking the oil level and I thought that's fine, but I did think it was strange it was noisy. Okay, it's just gone midday on Wednesday. I'm spraying now. When the sun came out, I switched from fertilizer to spraying chemical. We're on the winter wheat at farm one and we're putting on a, some growth regulator and fungicide, T1 I think. Right, I've got the drone. We'll open it up, get the drone flying. I've just got a couple of tram lines left in this field to do. And then we'll be going back to fill up. So I thought it'd be quite cool to do a bit of videoing in the field. 
and then video us driving back to the yard. This drone, I've had one of these before, and then when I was, when I was driving the combine, I crashed it. And then I changed to the uh, DJI Mavic, which I wasn't, I didn't like that as much as this, so I've now gone back to the unique Typhoon H. I bought this used, I think they've discontinued this drone now. I bought it used and I just had to get some brand new batteries for it. So, and it works really well. I've, I've played with it a couple of times now. Alright, put the battery in and get the controller out. If I can. The only thing is with this drone is it's quite big and bulky, so it takes up a lot of space in the cab and it's so we can get this controller going. Switch that on. We'll switch the drone on. Because it takes a few minutes for it all to connect and the camera to connect. Put the put the blades on. cracking day it's about 16 and a half degrees and you see I caught the Sun yesterday when we were out crop walking yes yeah, lovely day there's it's barely barely any wind at all about two three kilometers two or three kilometer an hour winds we've got to put all these blades on here they've got white ones and black ones So I'm guessing they're left-handed and right-handed. Right. That's that. And put this box away. Chuck that in the cab. Got a nice little bear patch in here for, for um, taking off the drone. Right, that's all connected. It's connected to 12 satellites. It's got a 16 and a half, it's got a full battery. It's quite good because a lot of drones you have to use your phone for the control and the screen. But this, it comes with its own, its own screen built in. Turn that down. Um, I expect you want to see it take off, don't you? Wait there. We'll go back out. If I press the red button there, look. I'll put you between my knees. If I press the red button, it starts up the rotors. Nope. Why is it not working? Oh, it was because I had it switched to home mode. Right now, if I press the button, it will start up. Press this one. Oh, it's coming back down again. And then, can you see it? If I switch this switch, the legs fold up. We'll go get in the tractor. We'll press record. Yeah, we're now recording video.
as bet you probably noticed there's quite a lot of bare patches in the winter wheat coming back up the track. That is because of the wet winter that's done that, where it's all just lead wet, and then the seed just either rocks in the ground, or if it did manage to start growing, it was under water and the plant just died, so and then there's just bare patches. They are they are they're not all like that. Just following me back through the yard now. Yeah, they, they are the worst fields that we've got, and we've got a lot of good wheat, so they, you have just seen the worst ones we've got. So it's not all bad. You can probably see that BK Grain are in the yard. There's a problem with the grain store. One of the, the chain chain snapped on one of the conveyors and the sprocket is worn out as well, so they're just fixing that. And it's landed. Just dropped it down right there, look. Safely in one piece. 